So I'm hiding in this cave right now because outside is a hungry T-Rex that could get me at any moment. But how did I get into this mess? It started when I created an OpenAI assistant for my time travel agency, Time Journey. I wanted to use our company's proprietary data to answer visitors' questions about our products on our website. I even kept it up to date automatically by hooking it up to my company's Notion page and using the OpenAI Files API. So while I wait for my time machine, I'll show you how you can do the same, minus the time travel, and how I got into this mess in the first place. Here it is, Time Journey's website, experience history firsthand. We got a number of different travel packages, as well as a set of policies to make sure that our customers are kept safe. I've associated both the packages and the policies with my Time Journey assistant, and so when we go to the website and open up this chat, we're gonna be talking to that assistant. Let's go ahead and try asking, how do I know this will be safe? All right, it looks like it's using some of the data from my policy, so it's talking about the training, the experienced guides, and so on. Let's ask another question. What is the furthest journey in time that you offer? Dinosaurs and prehistoric life, very cool. Wait, what? Whoa. Where am I? Time bot, where do I go? Take a right at the fern tree and a left at the stream. Whoa, am I glad the assistant knew where this cave was. Anyway, while we wait for the time machine to reset, let me show you how to add critical data like that to your own assistant. First, I'm gonna show you the easy way to do this, but make sure to stick around till the end of the video because I'm gonna show you a way to keep this data up to date in an automated way so that you don't have to go to a UI and upload new files every single time. The fastest and easiest way to get your assistant working with your own data is to do it through the OpenAI developer portal. You can configure your assistant with custom instructions as well as give it access to tools. And in our case, we're gonna to wanna to activate this retrieval tool so that it can use the data that we upload. Next, you can add the files that you want the assistant to reference right here in the UI. So I've uploaded this PDF, including the time journey policies, as well as a JSON file, including all of the different packages that we provide. If you upload new files, the assistant will use the new data that you upload to answer questions. So for example, let's change the medieval quest to last four months instead of four days. I'm gonna go ahead and upload this new file. I'll delete the old one. I'll add the updated file. It takes a second to index all of the data within. I'll go ahead and save. And as soon as the assistant is updated, it should be able to answer questions correctly with the new data. So if we go back to the time journey website and we can ask, how long is the medieval quest journey? We can see that the assistant was updated because it answers that the medieval quest is now four months long. So if you have data that you're not updating very frequently, I would recommend to just upload the files directly in this assistant portal and not deal with any of the files APIs. One cool thing about the assistant's architecture is that you can actually use the same assistant in multiple different places. So I showed you how I used it on the website right here but you could just as easily use the Discord bot, which I showed how to build in a previous video that has all of the knowledge from the files that you uploaded. You can see here that TimeBot is able to answer my questions with the right context in Discord. Let's talk about what actually happens when we upload all of these files. Under the hood, OpenAI is doing something called RAG, or Retrieval Augmented Generation. Essentially, they're taking all of your files and breaking them up into these little bite-sized chunks. Then they're converting those chunks into vectors or sets of numbers that represent the meaning of all of those little chunks. These vectors are called embeddings. So whenever you hear that term, that's all it means. It's a numerical representation of your text. That allows them to retrieve the relevant pieces of data when you submit a question. Your message similarly gets converted into a vector and OpenAI does a vector search to find the most relevant bits of information to answer your question. You don't really have to worry about these details when using the Files API, because OpenAI just handles all of this under the hood for you. With knowledge retrieval, files can either be associated with the assistant or with a particular message. Typically, when a user submits a file, that would be associated with the message. Today we're gonna to take a look at files that are associated with the assistant directly. For my automated setup, I'm gonna be using OpenAI's new files API. My thinking here is that I'll have this Notion page which I keep up to date with all of my policies and packages, 
and then I'm gonna have a cloud function that can pull data from this page and put it into a file for OpenAI. Then I'm going to associate that file with an assistant so that the assistant can then use it in responses to questions. I'm going to call that function on a regular basis to check if the page has been updated. And if it has, I'm going to update the associated files in OpenAI for my assistant. So there are a few parts to this setup. First, I have to configure my Notion page so that I can call an API and retrieve that data. I'm using Notion as an example, but you could definitely use this with any other sort of database or knowledge base that you might have. The key thing is that you're able to retrieve the data programmatically, and since Notion has an API, I'm going to be using it to pull the data out and then put it into a file that I can use within OpenAI. So the first thing I had to do to set up Notion is go to this My Integrations page. So I created this integration I called TimeBot, and when you click into it, it's going to show you the secret which you can use to call the API. After you set up your integration, you're going to want to go over to your page, and in the top right corner, scroll down to Connections add connections, and search for the integration that you created. In my case, as you see, I already have TimeBot added as an integration on this page. So now that I have this page configured, let's flip over to the code. I made all of this code available on GitHub, so you can check it out in the description below. Let me walk you through it. The main thing you'll see here is this update knowledge cloud function, and it contains the various steps that I've described so far. I've created this Notion connector, which encompasses all of the code to retrieve data from Notion and make sure that the page is up to date. Then I'm going to write that data into a file, which I will then upload to OpenAI using this function. To make sure that the data is up to date and that I'm not associating old data with the assistant anymore, I go ahead and delete all of the associated files. Since OpenAI doesn't give me the ability to differentiate any of the files from each other, I just put all of the data into one single file and I delete that file every time I have an update. I hope that in the future they let us have some metadata associated with the files so we don't have to re-upload the entire knowledge base every single time. Anyhow, here we look at our assistant and we find any of the files associated with it and we go ahead and delete them. Afterwards, we upload the file using the OpenAI Files API, and you see here the purpose is assistance. That means it can be used for knowledge retrieval. After we upload the file, though, we need to also associate it with the specific assistant that's going to use that data. So that is the next API call that we make down here. Assistant Files Create. We pass the assistant ID as well as the file ID that we got when we uploaded the file. Now we should have the file linked to the assistant, and OpenAI should be able to use the data that we uploaded to answer users' questions. If you're curious to dive into the Notion integration details, you can find this Notion.js file that I created, where I loop through all of the different blocks found on the page, extract the text, and combine it into one long text that I can put into my file. Again, this code is available on GitHub, so make sure to go and poke around. I do want to note certain limitations with this Notion integration code, however, because I'm only supporting certain block types, and I'm not looping through all of the different pages of blocks. There's a limit of 100, and so if you have a really long page, this code isn't going to quite work. You're going to want to add some additional logic to go through the multiple pages of blocks. Putting Notion aside, you should be able to use this sort of approach to pull data out of any data source that you might have and upload that file to OpenAI. Now that the function is complete, I can go ahead and use my Firebase deploy to put it up into Google Cloud. I will be creating a separate video showing you how to deploy these types of cloud functions, so make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you see that as soon as it comes out. Now that the function is up, I can go ahead and quickly test it with Postman. So we have a certain page ID and an assistant ID that we pass as query parameters to the API. And it's going to go ahead and pull that data and update the page. So now whenever I call that function, it's going to check if the page has been updated within the last hour. And if so, it's going to refresh the data in OpenAI. To make the best use of that, I'm going to have to schedule an API call to call that function every hour. To schedule this cloud function to run, I am using Google Cloud's scheduler. If I go here, I can quickly configure it to run every hour. That's cron tab right there. I'm going to go ahead and configure the execution and just paste my URL, including the page ID and the assistant ID in here, and I can go ahead and create it. Let's see the update in action. If we go back here, we can ask what packages are available. As you see here, there are five packages currently available. Now I'm going to go ahead and go over to Notion, and I'm going to add a new package. So now we have a sixth package, this Renaissance Revival. I'm going to go ahead back over to the Google Scheduler. I'm going to force it a run. 
Looks like it ran successfully. We can go back to our page, we'll refresh, and we'll ask about the packages again. This time around, you can see that there are six packages, so it clearly updated our knowledge base. Now with this Google scheduler, it's gonna run every hour, so I don't really have to worry about it. I just have to make sure that my packages and policies are updated on the Notion page. I'd be curious to hear what sort of data sources you would wanna to connect to your assistant, so drop a comment down below and I'll let you know how I would approach that integration. Knowledge retrieval in the Files API can be a really great way to give your assistant access to your data, but it's not always the right tool. So I wanna talk about a couple of the limitations and alternative approaches that you might use. One consideration is the fact that there is a cost associated with the Files API, and it can be a little bit confusing. So the current price is 20 cents per gigabyte per day per assistant, which means that if you upload a bunch of data and associate it with a bunch of different assistants, you might end up paying a lot of money. I think in a lot of situations though, an assistant doesn't require that much data, so hopefully you can keep that per gigabyte cost under control. Specifically, one thing to be cautious about is to not automatically create a bunch of assistants that are associated with a bunch of your files. Generally speaking, you should only have one assistant per application, so a situation where you have multiple files associated with multiple assistants should be relatively rare. Another thing to keep in mind is how frequently you need to refresh your data. If it's something more frequent than once per day or once per hour at most, I would probably recommend taking a traditional RAG approach rather than using the Files API. I think the Files API is really meant for a more static sort of data set, but one that you can still update time to time. For an application like a Discord bot that knows about all of the messages on a server, including all of the new ones that users are sending, the files API and knowledge retrieval might not be the best approach. This is because the data gets updated too frequently, and so you're gonna be calling that files API all of the time, and there's no guarantee that the data is going to be up to date. There has also been a common complaint from users that when you try to upload multiple files, this can actually confuse the assistant. So I would recommend that you just jam all of your data into one file and make sure that it's obvious for the assistant how it should retrieve data from that file. You could include this in the instructions, as well as naming sections of your file in a way that the assistant can easily understand. Hopefully OpenAI addresses this issue pretty quickly so that you could upload a number of different files containing different information and the assistant won't get confused. So what if you're using a ton of data and you need to refresh it all the time? In that case, check out this video that goes over how to combine the power of RAG with the assistant's API. Or if the files API works for you and you wanna put your chatbot on your site, Check out this video, which dives into the details of doing just that. I'll see you there.